Hello and welcome to the 11th video of my Pygame project here. Now, today I want to kind of work on sort of UI, at least give the users some information on like, uh, what, how many bullets the player currently has, how many enemies are on the screen, how many lives the player has, uh, you know, just some general information that the player might find useful while they're playing the game. So that, you know, how many enemies has the player killed? All of this sort of stuff. Now, this is where it's kind of tricky. Because one of the problems with all of this stuff is that you have to ask, where am I going to put the UI? Because uh, the UI has to be able to access a lot of different data members. Meaning, if we want to know how many enemies are on the screen, we need to be able to access the enemies array, this thing, so that we can see how many enemies are currently on the screen. If we want to know how many lives the player has, we need to be able to access the player. Now, the only place to access all of this stuff is in main, because main imports everything. So, because our main file is the only thing that imports everything, this is where we would kind of want to put it. But, at the same time, the main file doesn't handle a lot of stuff. For example, if we uh, take enemy.destroy, or not enemy.destroy, but enemy.take damage, take this for example. When we kill an enemy by shooting it with bullets, enemy.take damage is called whenever a bullet hits it. And when we go into enemy.take damage, then what you can see is self.health minus equals one, if health is less than or equal to zero, destroy self. Well, at this point, is where we're, we would actually be, you know, gaining a point. We would, when it destroys itself, with this function call right here, self.destroy, this is where we actually gain a point for killing it. So, how do we add that point, basically? If we're going to put, if we need access to all the members, which means we need this thing in main, but we also need access to this function so that, you know, we can say something like, you know, score plus equals one, so that you know we can add a point to our score for enemies killed then how do we access all of this stuff well this is where it actually almost makes more sense to use utilities or utils because utils is accessed by everything meaning that everything can edit values inside of utils so if we create something, say, let's create a class in here. Let's call this scoreboard. And this is just going to be, you know, a general thing. So define in it um, self. And then inside of here, you know, scoreboard is going to be like pretty much everything we've done so far. So we're going to have, you know, self.image. That's going to be a pygame.surface. Uh, pygame and our scoreboard, what is it going to be? Uh, let's see how 100 by 200 looks. And then I'll say self.image.fill white self.rect equals self.image.getRect. So just, you know, creating the basic stuff of pretty much all of our objects. Define update. And some of this is wrong currently, but I'm just creating the actual object for now. You, you'll see what I'm trying to do in a moment. So define update, all we have to really say is game window dot uh, blip self dot image to self dot rect. And then of course make the update take a game window. Okay, so now you can see this and just to make this thing stand out, I'm going to make it a giant red box. Um, so we can see it in the game. Now, the idea behind this is that the scoreboard is going to be able to access everything. So it's going to display multiple data types, and it's going to have access to a lot of things. So I just have to set its position, self.rec.x um, equals, what are we, 100 wide. It's six, it's a thousand, so we want this over on the right side, self.rec.y equals zero. 
top right side basically is what we're looking to put this thing at. So this should run um, once we create the object and we'll create the object and then we'll start kind of talking about how this thing works. So we have player objective. I'm going to create the scoreboard. So we'll call this um, score B equals uh, utils dot scoreboard object. There we go. And then we just have to say score B dot update somewhere probably by our player. Player dot update score B dot update game window. And there, now if I run this, hopefully it'll show up. There we go. So we have this nice little scoreboard over here. And I'm just, it's currently red just so you guys can see where it is. It's probably going to be white so it matches with the background later on. But let's take a look. What's the first thing we want to display? First thing we want to display is the number of enemies killed. So we need to kind of draw that. So let's go here. Define, draw, enemies, killed. This is very long, but it'll work. So what I can say is how do we do this? Well, drawing the enemies killed is going to be like how we draw pretty much everything. So we need the actual text version of what we're going to draw. So we're going to say text is going to be equal to a get font. Um, we'll just use the generics dot render. We're going to render, you know, some set of text. And this is going to be like, you know, enemies killed colon plus um, plus uh, enemies killed some abstract variable that we don't quite know yet then we're gonna say true and we're gonna color this as black so this is the text we're rendering enemies killed plus the number of enemies killed that's the text we're gonna render well what is the number of enemies killed well that is actually going to be a static value basically. So if we come, remember how we did this with the enemy group? Well, if we create a static value called enemies killed, we'll set that equal to zero. Then when we add this, we can actually go scoreboard dot enemies killed and access this. So let's see, expected type union got int. Oh yeah, that's right. So it just, it's complaining that I'm not giving it a string value. So I'm going to cast it with str for string. And that's because scoreboard the enemies killed is going to be an in value. It's going to be the number, but we just have to cast it to a string so that um, it understands we're using a string here because it can't render an integer. It has to render a string. So we're just casting it by um, putting it inside a string. Okay. So now we're rendering this. Let's actually see, draw enemies killed. When we update and before we blit, before we, you know, blit this thing, we're going to do all of this stuff. So we're going to, first thing we're going to do is draw enemies killed. And we have to say self because it's a self-contained function. Self.draw enemies killed. So we have our text and then all we're going to do with the text is blit it. So we're going to say self.image.blit the text at uh, what's a good position since it's a hundred across probably blit it at you know what five and ten just see how that looks at this point you know getting the right how you want it to look is just trial and error enemies and that's clearly not large enough as you can see we only have enemies here so I'm actually because I don't want to shrink it down too much I'm gonna just say killed and I'm gonna change the font to get font I'm going to say size equals 16 instead of 20. Hopefully this will be a little bit better so we can see everything. Killed zero. So we can see the first digit. Um, that'll probably be a problem. We'll probably want to make that larger or somehow clearer. But for now, you can actually see it and nothing happens to it. Because of course, we don't have it set up to do that. But let's go to the enemy to check this. So this is where we said we were going to add our score, right? Well, here's something interesting. We're importing utils inside the basic enemy, which means we're importing or we're importing the image of class scoreboard. Now, the image of class scoreboard has a static member called enemies killed. 
we can do something with this. So what we can say is utils dot scoreboard dot enemies killed plus equals one because we have access to that static member because everything imports scoreboard. So let's run main method again. Now let's try and kill some of these. Well, it's kind of hard to tell because one, we're drawing it wrong and two, um, it's small font, but that actually changed. So this is probably a pretty bad example because I just, it's not drawing correctly yet, but it is changing. So let's quickly change up how it draws. First off, What needs to happen is when we update the scoreboard, we need to say self.image.fill red because we need to redraw it. Um, we're redrawing the image, so we don't want to draw over. And also, I want to change a couple things. This is now 200 wide. The font is now going to be 20, which I understand is the base font, but it will be okay. And we're going to draw at the same location. So this is me just changing it up so it's easier for you guys to see. We're not at the right location. 800. And now it should work. Okay, you can clearly see killed is zero. Much easier to see now, right? We killed one, now it's equal to one. We killed two, now it's equal to two. Killed three, now it's equal to three. Killed four, you can see where this is going. So. The reason we're doing it this way is because everything is using utils, which means everything has the image of the scoreboard. And because everything knows what the scoreboard looks like, everything can access these nice static members or these static variables. So what else do we want to see? Um, we wanted to see, you know, player ammo. We don't know what that is equal to, but we have to set it equal to something. So we're going to set it equal to zero. Um, let's see, player lives is equal to zero. Uh, this is just instantiating the scoreboard. We don't, we'll know what these are later, but we have to set them equal to something because if we just say player lives then it gives us an error. So we have to set it to something. And of course we'll change it when we know what it is after probably the first or a couple ticks of the game. So let's set up these, player ammo and player lives. We'll draw enemy killed. Uh, what's probably a good idea is that we have a function for each of these draws. So define or we could just say define draw and then draw all the members, but draw player ammo. And this is going to be a very similar thing. Text equals get font. We'll go with size 20 dot render. And then this is ammo. So we can say something like ammo plus or ammo with a space plus the string of scoreboard dot player ammo um, true and black then self dot image dot blit the text at a new location we can't use five anymore I don't know how tall it is so let's go with 25 that should be okay and or not 25 but 10, 15, 30, and X will still be five, just because we need to bring this one down for the Y value, so it's okay. Actually, 20 actually tells me the height, so if I want there to be some space between the two, then I need, probably need to make this 35. And of course, draw player ammo, self dot draw player ammo. And we just have to go and update player ammo somewhere. Let's see, generic player. Probably in here is where we'll update the ammo when we spawn ammo. Add a bullet. And then we can just say, you know, utils dot scoreboard dot player ammo. And then of course, every time we spawn an ammo, why don't we just set it to what the ammo is equal to? I mean, that works. Equals, you know, self dot or I should say the length of self dot ammo. Now ammo technically changes how much we have when we fire 
and when we spawn ammo, but we spawn ammo every second, or actually a couple times a second, I do believe. If I check the update function, I'll probably know. So cooldown minus equals one, spawn ammo. So spawn delay max is our value, whatever that is. Spawn delay max is right here. So yeah, two times a second is when we spawn ammo. So basically we should be able to check by running this. You can see two, three, four, five, six. Now we will shoot it and it'll be a little bit off, of course. But I mean, we shoot it quick enough and it updates two times a second that it'll be okay. Just shooting it won't be too much of a problem. I mean, if we wanted it to be 100% accurate 100% of the time, we would change its, we would, you know, set it equal to the ammo value when we shoot and when we spawn ammo, just so that it's always correct, but this way is fine too. And now we know how many bullets we have. All right, what's some other values we might want to know? Well, I suppose we still had one we didn't implement yet, and I guess we'll do that really quick before the end of this video. Let's see, player lives, there's a good one. So draw enemies killed, draw player ammo, and we probably, you know, wouldn't want to hard code these values. We would probably want something to handle it um, on its own, but this will work for now. So draw, define, draw player lives, and then of course we would just say text equals get font dot render, and then give it some type of text like lives plus the string value of scoreboard.playerLives, true, black text, self.image.blit text, five, and we need to add another 25 to this value, so 60, right? And then of course, draw it down here. And now because this probably is pretty easy to implement, uh, draw player lives. So this is actually probably pretty easy to implement because we know what our font size is, which means we know how many pixels we have to add these together. And they're basically using all the same, you know, variables. So it's probably easy to implement these all into one function uh, or, you know, create a function that does all of these for it instead of having to update with each one. But this works for the way it is. And then, you know, draw player lives. All we have to do is set the static member player lives equal to how many lives we have. So let's go check that out. Uh, generic player. Let's see, player active lives equals three. What we probably would want to do to make sure that the lives are always accurate is do something like um, utils.scoreboard.playerLives equals self dot lives. When we create the player object, you know, make sure this, um, this is actually an issue. You know what, I can't actually say this here, now that I think about it, because we create the player before we create the scoreboard. Actually, that wouldn't be a problem, would it? Because this is a static variable. You know what, let's just do it. This shouldn't be a problem, because my, what I was thinking was, because we create the player before we create the scoreboard, so we create the player, then we create the scoreboard down here. That would cause a problem. But because the scoreboard variable is static, it means these are kind of instantiated when utils is imported in main and utils is imported as its first statement. So it should be okay. Just kind of try to ignore, unless you understood what I said, just pretend it didn't happen. We'll instantiate this here. So once we set our lives equal to what we want, we set the scoreboard's lives to it. And then when we lose a life, so... Where do we have it? Take damage self.lives minus equals one. We can say, you know, utils.scoreboard.playerLives or player lives equals self.lives. And then just set it together. So let's run this, make sure it's working. Hopefully it is so that everything works okay. Lives are equal to three. Our ammo is going up and we haven't killed any. Let's kill one. Boom, we killed one. Our ammo is still going up. We have three lives. Let's get hit by this next one. Lives are two. Let's get hit by this one. Lives are zero. Let's get hit by the last one. See if it kills us. Kills us. Lives are zero. It's game over time. So there we have it. We did kind of short scoreboard. Um, 
I guess I don't really want that to be, well, I guess red is okay. It doesn't really matter. Do we have any colors we haven't used yet? Let's see, we got green, we have blue. Yeah, I guess it's okay. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching. Hope you get how to kind of create the scoreboard, or at least how we're doing it. Uh, like I said, there are multiple ways of, do well, I don't know if I said it, but there are multiple ways of doing this. You could just, you know, pass a scoreboard object through everything, or you could, um, in the main function, say update scoreboard, and then pass all the arguments through it. Like if we wanted to know all this information, we could just, when we do scoreboard.update um, here, we could give it the game window, we could give it the player object, we could give it the enemy list, uh, we could give it all this information that we want, and then, you know, it just dissects it when we update the scoreboard. But this way kind of lets us update the scoreboard only when events happen, such as when the player collides with the enemy, or the player takes damage, we can update the scoreboard. Whenever a thing spawns, we can update the scoreboard. It just makes it so that we're not updating the scoreboard at 30 times a second, but rather we're updating it as things happen. So it's basically just less we're doing each frame. But for a project this size, it probably doesn't matter. You can probably update it every second, and it'll be okay. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hope to see you next time.